Today's show really is special. It's a review of the Heaven 11 Billy Mark II Hybrid Integrated Amplifier. And it is one smooth operator. First of all, I think it looks really cool. But the sound, yeah, the sound is warm and inviting. Yeah. It's, it's pretty compact, by the way. It's only 14 inches wide. Uh, it runs a little warm to the touch. Now, those tubes, yeah, the tubes. Now, there's a lot of hybrid uh, integrated amplifiers that have a couple of tubes in them. I've heard many of them, and they're nice. They're really good. But this one is different because to cut right to the chase, it really does sound like a tube amplifier, like an all-tube amplifier. That, I can't think of when that happened the last time. Because it is, the solid state part of it is class D. And it's a powerful class D. It's, well, 120 watts a channel into 8 ohms, 215 watts a channel into 4. And I gotta say, it'd be hard, you'd be hard pressed to find a tube amplifier as small as this and as powerful as this for this kind of money. And I'll get to the price soon enough. The other thing I have to bring up early on, because it's, it's obvious, it's right there in front of you, is the knobs. <laughs> the knobs are special. And Billy's knob feel is, well, first of all, you have some choices there. You can get Billy with wood knobs, and that's the standard uh, option. And they feel precise, and they, they feel different than metal knobs that we all use all the time. There's just, it just is a more organic feel. But then, and there's a few different types of wood. But then you have, there's the option of marble knobs. And these knobs, these marble knobs are solid marble. It's not like a veneer of marble. No, it's a solid chunk of marble. And it feels great. It feels, well, it feels really solid. So that's, that's really something. Now, before I forget, the smaller knob is the input selector. And when you turn it, those little uh, slits in the uh, extruded aluminum case, they light up to let you know which input you're on, one through six. And if you press on that knob, uh, the billy goes into uh, mute mode. And when it's in mute, the tubes, actually the LEDs under the tubes, are start glowing and they start throbbing. And it's, it's almost like they're breathing. And that's how you know from a distance that you are in mute mode. And as for the volume control, if you turn the volume control all the way to its minimal position, you're basically putting the amplifier in standby mode and the tubes uh, go to sleep. As I lived with this amplifier, I really felt that the user interface between me and the amplifier, it just felt so well thought out. It was just logical. It was so easy to use. It just made sense. Now, of course, there is a remote control and that is the one, mm, it's plastic, it's silver plastic, it works fine, but it does break the spell a bit of this luxury feel of the Billy amplifier. The, the amplifier itself is just a solid piece of industrial design and the remote control, mm, not so much. So let's take a peek at the rear panel and starting from the left, there's pre-amplifier outputs that can also be used to drive a subwoofer or two. And that, those preamp outputs can be switched to be line level outputs, meaning they could serve as a tape out, assuming you, you have a use for that. Then continuing, there are two aux inputs, then a phono preamp input, which is moving magnet only. And then there's a Bluetooth uh, thingamajig there. So those last two inputs uh, are coax and optical digital inputs that feed the built-in DAC, which is a PCM only 192 32-bit DAC. There's also a nice set of uh, heavy-duty binding posts. Uh, let's take a look inside Billy's chassis, and you will see there are labels there to tell you what's going on there. So I'm going to put up the specifications right now and note the prices, and also note that Heaven 11 is a direct sale company by direct from the manufacturer. The U.S. price is $1,000. $939. The price in Europe is 1850 euros and the price in the UK is uh, 1,585 pounds. And yes, of course, there will be 
an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in the show. And one other very important detail, Billy is sold with a five-year warranty. Billy has two tubes, obviously, and they are in the preamp section of this integrated amplifier. And it comes with ECC 99 tubes. Those are the standard tubes. But you can also use 12 AU7s and also um, 12 BH7 tubes. I have an 11 cent, all three types to me, so I could mix and match and see what I thought of each, the sound of each, because they do sound somewhat different. And I will talk about those differences later on in this review. So, you know, over the course of this review, I used four sets of speakers. The Magnapan LRS Plus, the Kef LS50 Meta, uh, the Zoo Dirty Weekend 6, and, well, the one I actually started with was the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. It's a pretty big open baffle speaker with a 15-inch woofer, a single 15-inch woofer. And the sound was big. <laughs> the sound was voluptuous. It just had some juice to it, some warmth to it, like, a, let's say, an organic quality. And all of that added up to, it kind of sounds a lot like a tube amplifier. Now, I know there's lots of other uh, integrateds and that, that use tubes in their front end and are either class A, B or a class D in their output. Yeah, it's a pretty common configuration, but I've never heard one quite as convincingly tubey as the Billy amplifier. It really, it really was clicking for me. So, you know, the, the, the Purator Project is a pretty easy speaker to drive. It's a high sensitivity speaker. The impedance isn't weird. So it's a piece of cake. How would Billy deal with something really, really difficult like the Magnapan LRS Plus? Oh man, because that one is very low impedance, very low sensitivity. A lot of amplifiers struggle to sing with that, with that speaker. But this time, man, it was just a great combination because it the, those 215 watts were doing their duty and making the LRS Plus just come alive, was more dynamically alive than I'm used to hearing from it. The bass had more weight, more substance. Now, most people, would, many people, I should say, use LRS with a subwoofer. I wouldn't, especially in this combination. The bass was very, very satisfying, and the highs were so clear and pure. So I don't mean to insinuate that the Billy is a warm, mushy, or rolled-off sounding amplifier. It is not. It just has more uh, substance to its sound than most. As for the music, the first LP I played actually was this Elton John Greatest Hits. And I was using the Technics SL1200G and the Grado Platinum 3, which is a moving iron cartridge. It's pretty much the same thing as a moving magnet. So I was using it with the Billy and that combination was just great. So anyway, I'm playing the Elton John Greatest Hits and I was so, you know, I don't think those records sound good. I don't think, I love Elton John's music, especially his early stuff, but I don't think they're great sounding records. But somehow, <laughs> the Grado, which also is pretty sweet and big and fat, and the Billy together, man, it just made this music new again to me and so much more beautiful sounding and more life to it. And the dynamics were fantastic. So I was totally in. So yeah, as for the Billy's phono section, it was firing on all cylinders. To continue, I decided to switch over to the Kef LS50 Meta and play the music of Lizzie Mercier Desclo. Now she's a French, she was a French musician. This was out recorded in 1981 in Jamaica by the extraordinary Chris Blackwell for his label uh, Island Records. And it is really a trip. Her voice is so powerful, the way it sits over the mix. The drum sound is great. And the track that follows Sun is Rising on the album, can't remember the name, is also really, really good. It just, it seems so inventive, like a fresh new take on reggae music. So if you have Kobuz or whatever, check this album out. But anyway, I was playing it loud. I was digging the dynamics, the life that was coming out of these little speakers, the Kef LS50 Metas. Yeah, this amplifier has the muscle to make these speakers really get up and boogie. To continue with the LS50 Meta, I decided to go back to vinyl and I played this 
unusual record. It's a direct-to-disc record on Sheffield Labs. I looked around. It's not hard to find, by the way. And it was recorded without analog tape or digital or anything. The, the, it was basically recorded to a record-cutting lathe with the band playing live. So there's no edits, there's no fixes, there's no nothing. They play the entire one side of a record at a time. And the artist's name is Jim, is, I'm sorry, is Larry McNeely. It's bluegrass music and it just has this very real presence to the sound. And the combination of the Billy and the LS50 was just making it happen. It was just, I was, my jaw was on the floor because it just sounded like this is real. This is happening right now. Really, really special. At this point, I want to check out Billy Sound with headphones for you people out there that use them. And I plugged in a set of Sennheiser slash Mass Drop HD58X headphones. And I continued with the Larry McNeely album. And to have that sound in my head without any, you know, and without artifice, maybe that's what I'm looking for. It just sounds, again, like it's happening in real time because, in fact, it was. These musicians were making an album complete. When they finished the last note, the record was done. <laughs> and there it was, and there was no edits, there was no fixes, there was no nothing. And you just get that sense. So anyway, that, the headphone sound, definitely gets a thumbs up from me. And I did want to spend some time comparing the sound of the tubes, these different tube types, ECC99, 12AU7, and 12BH7. And for this portion, I was back on speakers, back on the KEF LS50 Metas, and I played this at the CD by Noah Wall. She's a bluegrass musician. I guess I was in that bluegrass mode. And this was a Chesky session, so I was present at that session. I wasn't working at the session, but I was present. And I was so impressed with her singing at the time, because she's not a very large person, and she was singing in front of a band. And she had the power without an extra microphone just on her to really belt it out. So the first set of tubes I listened to were the 12AU7s. And the 12AU7 struck me right away as this is very transparent, very, very clear, but somewhat dynamically compressed. It didn't have quite the life that I was expecting. And the bass seemed, well, let's say more neutral, less fat. But I was used to that fatter sound. So anyway, so then when I switched to the ECC99, I got that, I got that fatness back. You know, it sounded more full, her voice. Noah's voice sounded more human, less, less of this and more body connected to the voice. And then I switched over to the 12BH7 tube and that was sort of in the middle. In some way, it was the best sounding tube. It was not too lean like the 12AU7, not too full <laughs> like the ECC99. It was sort of in the middle, but I don't know. I kept veering back to the ECC99, which is, as I mentioned earlier, the standard tube. But I did like these other flavors that tube swapping can give you. So it's nice to have that ability to season to taste. Uh, then it was time to try the two shits, the shit Jotunheim preamp and the shit Vidar 2 power amp. And the power amp is about the same power rating as the Billy, so it was a fair contest. And right away, the sound of the shit electronics was big and powerful sounding. It had a lot of get up and go. This is through the Kef LS50 meta. And I like that. It was definitely good. But you know, remember, I, up to this point, I had listened to Billy exclusively for five or six days without comparing it to anything else. So when I went to the shit electronics, the sound seemed, yeah, powerful, but not as um, alive, just kind of subdued restrained or something, like the musicians were tired. And then when I go back to Billy, it just had more life to it. It just came alive more. The music felt more like it was happening again in real time. So the two shits definitely sounded good. And I liked the, the power delivery aspect of that sound. If anything, it did sound more powerful than the Billy. I just sensed the musician's presence more with Billy than I did with the two little shits, sorry. The last speaker I wanted to try was the Zoo Dirty Weekend 6. That's a much bigger speaker than the LS50. It plays louder with greater ease. It has just more power delivery and it's much more dynamic sounding. 
than the LS50. And I was playing a very dynamic recording by Yuja Wang. Uh, this combination of Billy and DW6 with uh, Yuja Wang's music was extraordinary. First of all, she is a very powerful sounding player. She's really hitting it hard. And some tracks are solo, just her, and some tracks it's her with an orchestra. And the music is, let's call it Gershwin-esque, or maybe even a bit of Copeland in there too. So it's, it's rousing music. And it was just coming through in waves. <laughs> How can I put it? It's like the speakers just opened up and let it happen. And I had a big smile on my face. So yeah, and the tubiness, yeah, the tubiness with the ECC 99 tubes in the Billy, that, yeah, I kept circling back to that. I like the other tubes, especially the 12AU7 for its superior transparency and neutrality. So you can push the Billy to be more neutral, but I didn't, I don't care about neutrality, but maybe you do. Uh, so it's, it's a season to taste thing. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do, so Steve, what do you really think, what do you really think of the Heaven 11 Billy Mark II hybrid integrated amplifier? It's not just another amplifier. It doesn't sound like other integrated amps that I've heard anywhere near this price range. It has more soul. It has more beauty in its sound, which means another way of saying this is, if you are looking for accuracy and neutrality and that's your high priority, chances are you're not going to like the sound of this amplifier. This isn't for you. And if you've gotten this far into the review, thank you for hanging in there. But no, this is an amplifier that has some substance to it, some soul to it, that it is, I don't know, adding to the music or unleashing from the music. However you look at, look at it, it's, it's what I prefer. But as I pointed out, my opinions, I'm just, I'm just the messenger here. That's how to put it. I am just the messenger. I'm telling you what I heard. And then it's up to you to see if this is for you or not. So anyway, I love it. And I love the feel. I love those knobs. The wood knob is its own thing. It's nice not to touch metal when you're making your adjustments. But the marble knob, the solid, they're not, like I said, it's a solid chunk of marble beautifully finished, but it's solid marble, and that has its own pleasure to it. It just, the interface, yes, between human and amplifier is different and feels great, and that's a big part of living with this stuff. So with that, I can say it's now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Ryan sent us these pictures of his desktop system, which features a big boy shit stack featuring a Jotunheim preamp slash headphone amp, a Lokius equalizer, and the Shit Bifrost DAC. The power amp is an Adcom 545 Transport Pioneer Elite DV59 AVI. The turntable, clear audio concept. The speakers are Wharfdale Denton 80th anniversary models and Ryan's dog is Charles Barkley. You get it? Anyway, Barkley posed for the picture very reluctantly. Thank you, Ryan. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true. I am the audiophiliac, and I am the genuine article. There are people pretending to be me, scamming people, scamming manufacturers. Be, be forewarned. I would never ask for money except when I'm asking you to consider contributing to and joining my Patreon. The address is on the screen right now. And uh, we'll check out the site. Look at it, see if it's for you. You can join for a couple of months or stay around for a long time. Whatever works for you, it's all good. And if you like a video that I've done, this one and others, please remember to hit the like button. It really counts for a lot. And if you haven't yet subscribed, as we're inching towards 250,000 subscribers, hopefully by the end of this year, I'd be thrilled if you would do that for me. And that's it. That's all I got. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.